Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to today. Have we got a great show lined up for you? First up. We'll be discussing the ongoing publicity that surrounds young mums and ask why the negativity? Plus we'll see what fun activities you and the kids can get up to this summer. Richard Kalapo Ajala and Lucy Dello will be here giving us the lowdown on budget, summer fashion and makeup. And we've a dynamic bar flaring expert, Matthew Cotter. And finally, we'll be joined by a young woman with a hell of a voice. Paige McGuire will be here to play us out her new song, L O V E. Our first item today will be an interview okay. with someone oh, they who believes the media stereotype about young mums is not all true, and even unfair. Joining us today is young mum Sharice Jennings with Theo Brownlee and a midwife Sandra Manu. Thank you so much for joining us guys. How are you today? Um, I'm good, thanks. You good? Yeah, thank you. You're very good. How's little Theo? How are you doing? He's very well behaved. <laughs> this is going to be the toughest interview. I've ever done because you've got to try and stay professional, but how can you do that, lazy, <laughs> when you've got the cutest kid on the planet, possibly, in he's, Theo? He's so cute, my dad. <laughs> come on, right, come on, concentrate. Mm -hmm. So, guys, um, how are you both? You well? Fine, thank you. Good, good. Thanks. And, um, Cherise, so you are a young mum. When, when did you give birth to Theo? February. February. Mm -hmm. So, and how old were you? 17. 17, okay. And, um, obviously, 17, it, was it... Was it an accident? Was it planned? Uh, it wasn't Don't planned. Don't want to presume. <laughs> yeah. And uh, how did um, how did you feel when you when you first found out? How did you find out? Um, I was really shocked. I found out by a pregnancy test. So it was just. And that was the first time, and it was positive. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what was, I mean, what was the initial shock? You said you were very worried. Yeah, I was a bit worried about what my parents would say. Yeah. How they would act. But after a few days, they calmed down. Mm. What did What did your parents say? Um, well, my mum was just more angry, but worried, so she was just like, oh, how are you Of course, because you're so young. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But to be honest, I think that maybe giving birth younger is, is maybe easier, because yeah. you're more fit and stuff like that. Mm. Sandra, you're, you're pregnant at the moment, and um, would you agree with that? Would you say it's, it's a little bit easier, physically at least, to, to have a, a child a little bit younger? Well... <laughs> All the evidence shows that when you're younger, you're more agile and you're more able to um, cope with the physical demands of a pregnancy mm. than you would when you're, when you're older. So mm. all the evidence sort of suggests that, yes. Mm. And uh, so you've, uh, you've got that sort of shock of, of, of finding out you're, you're, you're pregnant. Um, how was it after that? Your boyfriend, what did he think about it? Um, he was just really supportive, really. So that was good. Um, that was that, really. And you're living, you're living at home mm -hmm. still. Yeah. So fini financially, how how is it? Um, it's it's okay. It's good. It's um, not hard really. Not it's hard. A, so yeah. that, that that's a good part of it. As you said, Sandra, before, um, financially is usually the most difficult part of it, especially if you're not getting support from family, boyfriend, etc. But how about the social side of it? I mean, I know. It's going to affect you in some way, but has it affected you dramatically or? Um, not dramatically, no. I mean, I can't really go out when I want. I can't do what I want, but it's not a problem to me, really. That's just the way it is. It's, mm -hmm. it's all about yeah. being, you know, a young mum. Mm. Mm. Sandra, initially, when, when you find out you need to, a lot of coping mechanisms that need to go on, um, what are the issues before, the, uh, before having a baby, Theo, or whatever baby, and that you have to go through? I think when you're a young mum, the issues are no different to an older mum, but the concerns are, are much greater, especially if you're unsupported. Cherise was lucky because she, her parents were supportive, so she didn't have financial worries. Mm. But for most young mums, it's really difficult if the father isn't supportive, the mm -hmm. family isn't supportive. Then you have issues with housing, money, and just general support. Being a parent is difficult at any age, more so when you're a young mum. Exactly, exactly. So do you feel like almost the struggle is over now? Is it? Is everything, you know, is your life kind of back to how it was or? It's not back to how it was. <laughs> no, but I mean, I mean, is it, I mean, the struggle, I mean, the initial struggle with the shock of it, etc. is everything okay now? Yeah, and everything's great now. Mm. So, I'm just getting used to it. You know, you, you give birth and then uh, the challenges really sort of kick in after that, don't they? Um, how tough is it once you've had the child, Sandra? 
It's tough because just the process itself of having a baby is really difficult and it's quite taxing on your body. Mm. So energy-wise, you can be a bit low. But when you get home, that's where the challenge really starts, the sleepless nights, the knowing that you have not only yourself, but this little person completely yeah. depends on and you too. And is there any help out there then for young moms out there? There, are, there is help for young mums if they're able to access it, and accessing it means that you have to have information about it. For some mums, there's no information, or they're not given information by the healthcare professional. Mm -hmm. But in the local area where I work in Greenwich, there is um, the point, which is the centre really, it's a one-stop shop, mm -hmm. where they have an intensive support worker for young mums, supporting them from the pregnancy right through to the birth and after. That's great. I and, uh, and I hear you, you want to be a midwife, so that's, that's great. What well, a well, beautiful story. And uh, baby Theo, you are gorgeous. Fact. <laughs> Thank you so much Thank for joining guys. us. We do really appreciate it. We've loved having you on here. <laughs> do you let us know how you're getting on with him. Okay. Thanks, guys. Now we realise that as parents, it's your duty to be harassed by the kids throughout <laughs> the summer. It's true. <laughs> so to help you in your time of need, we've been busy on the lookout for fun-filled activities to keep the kids busy. Let's take a look. Digital Shoreditch Festival, the first of its kind, brings together the best of the creative community with workshops, open studios, eye-catching displays, gigs, conferences, workshops, real-world interactive installations and augmented reality games. It's a week-long event that celebrates the creative talent that goes on around Shoreditch, the hub of digital creativity. But it's about much more than just showcasing talent. The emphasis is on nurturing an extensive digital community. Today we've got a range of things, um, from light installations where children can experiment with sounds and lights, um, through to Xbox Connect um, software that works, uh, that works with the with children interacting with the exhibits, to uh, augmented reality um, games um, with people, um, and then through to like really simple stuff um, like you know uh, face changing and. Uh, Today will be long remembered. I have combed the length and breadth of the galaxy to bring you all here. The force is strong in all of you, but only one can be my apprentice. Only one of you will rule the galaxy with me side by side. We've, you know, taken what we love and brought it here today, um, you know, to create a social video of ourselves, which we haven't actually really done before, so this has been really, really good fun. The Family Day provides an opportunity to reach out to other creatives and locals, particularly children who are the future of technology. The families are really, really important because, you know, it sounds really corny, but children are the future in terms of digital. It's almost like they've been born into an environment. It's something that we've had to, you know, adapt to and learn, and everything keeps on changing on a regular basis. Whereas, you know, kids nowadays, it's not in 3D, they don't want to see it. Um, and, you know, they're so technically focused in all that they do because it's around them that I think, you know, if they embrace it at a really early age, by the time they reach, you know, our age, then they'll be more, more adapted to it than we could ever imagine. Although it's the end of Digital Shoreditch Week, we won't be saying goodbye for long as they'll be returning soon with more digital creativity for you to experience. As well as Digital Shoreditch, we've also found other events for you and your family to enjoy this summer. Starting off in June, a series of workshops will be taking place at Somerset House near the Strand, inviting kids to get creative in a fun, lively atmosphere. There are exciting arts and crafts sessions available every Saturday on the holidays. Starting in June is the City of London Festival. From the 26th of June to the 12th of August, street pianos, beehives, honey tastings, music concerts, exhibitions, dance and street arts will be gracing London's most iconic locations such as the Tower of London and St Paul's Cathedral. Continuing on with the fun of the festival, on the 2nd of July from 12 to 7pm, Greenford Carnival will be taking place at Ravener Park. The park will come alive with a fun fair, music and dancing, sports, arts and crafts, and fun activities for all of you to enjoy. And finally, it's London Kids Week from the 12th of August up until the 26th of August. Children aged between 5 and 16 have free access to any participating show when accompanied by an adult paying full price. 
Now, if that's not enough to keep the kids away from the TV, I don't know what is. We're going to take a short break now. We'll see you after this. Hello and welcome back. We hope you enjoyed your tea and biscuits during the break. We're just getting started here. Still to come. We talked to fashion guru Richard Kalapo Ajala to get the lowdown on budget summer fashion. Alongside Richard, we'll also have professional makeup artist of the stars Lucy Dello here to show us how to get that hot summer look. Plus the entertaining bar flaring expert Matthew Cotter. And finally, the hugely talented Paige Maguire is here to play us out her new single, L-O-V-E. Now here on Today, we realise that as parents, it can seem difficult to get that hot look for the summer. Not only is it time consuming, but there's the added pressure of getting the right look for the right money. Joining us now in our studio is the very own Mr. Fashion himself. It's Richard Kalapo Ajala. He went onto the streets of London this week to find that summer look so you don't have to. Guys, um, how are you both? Good, thanks. Yeah, good. good. We've also got Lucy here, who um, is a, a makeup artist. And what we're going to do, guys, you're going to help us help everyone with uh, the summer trends. What are the big summer trends this summer, Rich? Um, well, we've got four main trends. We've got um, tailoring, prints, 70s, and um, with more color blocking. Color blocking. Look. And that's the same for men and women, is it? This yeah. And, and makeup? It's just um, sort of pastel colours for the summer. I know the only trends. way is Essex was, was big this year. Is it like fake tan after fake tan? Is that, it's is that not it? as much as that, no. It's not? It's more just subtle, but with more Bond spaces. OK. So we've got two models with us. Uh, we're going to bring them out one by one. We're going to start with Emma. Sorry, we're going to start with Rory. My apologies. Um, Rory's looking very dapper. Rich, do you want to talk us through that? This is a quite a cheap outfit, isn't it? Okay, yeah, this outfit is like completely from the, um, the high street. We've got an Aztec print um, t-shirt, which goes with the print trend that we had um, earlier on. Um, 25 pound um, shorts from Uniqlo and eight pound deck shoes from Primark. Okay, and, and how much did it all cost? Um, this, all of the whole outfit comes under 60 pound. Wow, that's, that's very cheap, isn't it? And this Aztec print, is it just Aztec or is there, what, um, what kind of patterns and prints are, is in trend this season? Uh, tribal's quite a big print, um, Aztec, and just, you know, florals obviously for women's wear. Okay. And is there, you spoke of colour blocking, does that occur with men's stuff here? Is that what you're going for? Um, not in this particular outfit, but on the, um, the catwalk we have seen quite a lot of co colour blocking from people like Jill Sander. And Rich, talk to me about the shorts. Back in the day they used to be pretty baggy, had to be below the knee, otherwise you look silly. Now, Rory's got some pretty tight um, shorts on there. Yeah, um, as I say, we've why got, is that? We've got um, a tailoring trend that's going on in menswear, so it's cut above the knee. I mean, you can roll it up if you want to. And because um, it's quite, um, quite a simple idea, it can be dressed up or dressed down. It can apply to the older generation also. And quickly, the, the boat shoes, that's, that's a big trend this summer, is it? Um, yeah, boat shoes have uh, come in quite a lot in the summer, mm. so they've become quite popular. Okay, I'll tell you what I like about this outfit. You know, he's been cautious. He's got a little jumper around the neck. That's nice. My mum always said, you can always add, you can never minus. Rory, very clever. Okay, let's swap. Emma, she's our female model. She's going to come out. And uh, she's looking very lovely in a very summery outfit. Um, Lucy, let's look at the makeup first. Um, what sort of makeup has Lucy got on there? Um, around the eyes, it's just creams and browns. Just keep it. That's all for summer, and then foundation would be the same tone as the natural skin tone, and then a bit of bronzer, and then a pale pink, sort of neutral colours along the lips. Okay, and so in the winter, I seem to see quite a lot of, sort of red lipstick. Does that sort of go away a little bit in the summer? Is it a bit more of a natural look? Um, it is still around, but it's more neutral colours. Mm. And the, and you're hoping with the bronzer, I guess put a bit of colour in, in, the, in the cheeks, yeah. is that right? Make them look a bit more tan, but not too much, as we said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. And the outfit, Rich, talk to us about that. Okay, so here we have um, a tangerine overbag top, uh, which was £23 from Zara, some £25 um, high-waist ivory 
shorts, which goes with the 70s uh, look, and some accessories. You can see some big sunglasses. And cool. And those white shorts are, um, I mean, Emma can pull them off, but uh, not everyone can pull them off. If you're a little bit older, maybe you don't want to get, get the thighs out, you don't want to wear white hot pants, uh, what's, what's, a diff what's an alternative that you can use this summer? Okay, so the trend for women's wear is actually high-waisted shorts, so um, if you're not looking to do that, you can always change to go with the 70s vibe to a high-waist jean. Right, and, and talk to us about the colour blocking, because that's, that's definitely evident here, isn't it? Okay, yeah, so with the tangerine top, we, it's quite bright, it's quite vibrant, so you simplify it with your accessories and just go with some white shorts. Okay, oh, great. And the, that orange, not every skin tone could wear orange, is that right, Lucy? Um, it does go with both skin tones, pale and tanned. Um, I'd say it'd go more with a tanned skin tone. Great. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. So we're going to have some amazing bar flaring now with Maisie. Maisie, take it away. We would like to introduce you to a young barman responsible for a lot more than pulling pints. Matthew Cotter is a flaring bartender working for the chain of American themed restaurants, thank God it's Friday, more commonly known as TGI Fridays. He is here today to do a live demonstration and make us some gorgeous summer cocktails. Okay, Matthew, firstly, for us that don't really know what bar flaring is, can you explain exactly what a bar flare is? <laughs> well, basically, back in the 80s when Fridays was first originated, They've done a sort of tournament to show showmanship and creativity and what you can do, different styles, different uniques. Um, first started off in about 1986. Yeah. The start of the flare competition. From there, it just exploded onto the scene with technicality, creativity, all being marked individually. Now, in the modern day, you've got such characters as Tom Dyer, Jay Tway, Nicolas St. John, all started at Fridays and yet completely exploded into the industry. Amazing, yeah. Completely set the standard for the rest of us. Of course. And you say it was started off at TJ Fridays. Obviously, other industries, didn't they mm -hmm. start it off as well? Well, like I said, Tom Dyer, he's been one of the more prominent figures in the industry. He started his own flair company, and then from there, he started his own little competitions, winning the Fridays Championships, and then now he's gone on to produce the World Tour. World Tour, so mm. you could be competing in that? Oh, maybe in a few years' time. Maybe in a few years' time. Before the show, you said to me um, the final competition's in Vegas. Was that for the same competition? Yeah, correct. The Sky Vodka um, competition that Tom Dyer sponsors, yep. everyone will be competing at. Amazing. And it's more than just sort of serving a drink. It's, yeah. it's entertainment at the same time as well. Yeah, that's what Flair's all about. It's not just about flowing bottles. It's about showing your personality, your pride and your passion, or what you can show and bring to the table. Awesome. Are you going to show us a few yeah, drinks? Yeah, why not? Amazing. I'll step out the way. <laughs> Sometimes I get a hop in my back Sometimes I'm going over here I'm not going to be able to do it as well as you did. Oh, we'll start <laughs> off a nice and simple one. We're going to do an arm row. Right. You're going to hold the tin out like that. Okay. Keep your arms straight. Keep your eye on the ball. And you're just going to roll it down your front. Okay? Give it a go. I'm going to try after yeah. you. Yeah. Just like that. Nice and simple. Keeping your eye on the tin and your arms straight. There we go. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> Almost. I'll try again. Ready? Oh. There okay. we go. Bang I kind on. of caught it. I was a bit cheating there, but you All know. Right. You want to learn another one? Yeah, go for All it. Right. We're going to do a wrist flick, okay? So just in your hand, hold it like you're going to like strangle someone, I'll and strangle, then flick okay. it, and flick it. There right, we go. That was more in the of a, um, a chuck, but just as good. Okay. Yeah. Bang almost. <laughs> I'm awesome. not quite as good as you. Okay. So how long did it take you to learn that? Because I mean that didn't come naturally to me whatsoever. Well, I've been working for Fridays for about nine months now, and pretty much just sort of got into it gradually as I learned new cocktails. I thought, why not try something different? So I start practicing every day, bought a flare bottle since I started and just pretty much been a gradual test and then hopefully one day I'll be able to compete with Tom Dyer. Amazing, let's hope so. So it took you, how long roughly did it take you? Was it months, was it weeks, days? Well it just depends, it's sort of like a form basis, like a sport, so you really go through off peak and bad peak and sort of stuff like that, but to flare it's really your own determination, so it really took me about a couple of weeks really to get it down on the head. Couple of weeks, and you said earlier before the show, you said um, that you practice two to three hours a day. You try to. Yeah, I try to. That's that's pretty cool. That's I mean, that's that's pretty hard. I mean, I couldn't uh, honestly like after one minute, I just couldn't do it. But um, yeah, what else was I going to ask you? What's been your biggest BFF? Oh, I'm probably nearly hitting a guest at one point. Really? Yeah, it's been very embarrassing. Nearly chucking bottles around and thinking, yeah, it's fine. And get a little bit too cocky, and then bang. 
That's the biggest bar flare fumble. Okay, so you need to knock some guests out. Yeah, they're great. That's not cool. All right then. Um, so this drink here, that's the not so Cosmo. Not so Cosmo. Correct. Okay, and this is non-alcoholic. Yeah. Well, basically, when we said we we're going to come here, we we're going to do a summer cocktail, something for the family, something like air can drink. So uh, done on our research, we found the Cosmopolitan was the most popular drink. So yeah. therefore, we thought we'd do a non-alcoholic version. Amazing. Can you show us it? Yeah, sure. Brilliant. Why not? Right, first ingredient, very vital, cranberry juice. Uh huh. And to supplement the alcohol, we're going to use orange juice as our orange liqueur. A little bit of lemon juice. And you can use, instead of lime juice, you can use lime squeezes, just to get a texture on the front sure, of it. Sure, so use fresh lemon as well. That's to fill it up. Give a good hearty shake to aid dilution. There we go. Yeah, that's my time, that's my cue. <laughs> yeah. Just in time. Cosmo, not so Cosmo, right? Not so Cosmo. Yes, I'm going to strain it just to get rid of the ice particles. Wow. Ladies first. Ladies, well, that's Voila. you, surely. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> yeah? Tastes good, yeah. It's zesty. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's all we have time for on today. Sorry, I'm joking. <laughs> Join us tomorrow when we have to discuss the issue that surrounds premature babies. Maisie gets her feet nibbled by a fish. Should mm -hmm. be interesting. And we'll be taking a look at the perfect menu for the grandest of summer feasts. But for now, we're very privileged to welcome a young lady with one hell of a voice. To play us out today, here's Paige Maguire with an acoustic version of her single, L-O-V-E. Take it away. I know that when saw your face make me feel so far from raising I don't care what you say. And I can't let you go, oh no I know that when I get that feeling There is no other meaning for the things I'm thinking late at night It's so scary, I think I give myself a little love fright At first I thought you weren't all right, I'm not gonna lie But now I'm amazed at how you changed my life You're a bit of a loser but I wouldn't want to lose if anyone else You don't compare to Saturday, but you like a Sunday morning When you think you're getting cereal But you wake up to bacon, oh what a nice surprise, just like you Lottery, I can put my trust in. 